session. A little bit of bag work, got a sweat on, got a few kicks in. Happy with that. It's a little bit overcast today. I don't know what's going on. It's still hot, but it's overcast. So I've decided to dress today. Reeboks. Funny little sole on these bad boys. Preview bottoms. Preview top. Hats by the rabbit. Re... well... Oh, it's, it's a Kango. It's starting to be one of my favourite hats now. I kind of got over for a while. I wasn't really into it. Then after man bag. <laughs> Usually goes around the waist, but rocking it in a different way today. It's got everything. Got my mask, my little camera that I use here. Now, if you're wondering what camera this is, it's a Osmo Action. Tiny little yoke. Let's see if you can see it in the mirror. That's it. And that's all I use generally, unless I'm indoors. And then I'll use the, the Fuji. Right, I'm gonna go to the supermarket and get some stuff. I'm kind of really over the mask things, you know that? Really am. And it kind of reminds me, some air in here, otherwise we look bleeding dog dying. Kind of reminds me of, um, I remember going to Africa with the dock and we never got inoculations. We didn't get anything. First year I did, I got yellow fever and stuff like that. But the second year, we were meant to get rabies, yellow fever, typhoid. I just hadn't got any money, so I didn't get any. And I used to drink tap water because we couldn't afford bottled water. Coca-Cola was cheaper than bottled water. We still couldn't afford two quid a day for fucking water. Because <laughs> we would have been drinking probably eight liters a day. We're putting out so many calories, you know, and going out on the bike and riding. So we just drank tap water. I used to go to a woman on the street. I say on the street, on the sand, because there was no fucking street that had some cardboard up to stop the wind coming in. She used to light a fire and had a pot with rice and fish and vegetables and a snotty-nosed baby strapped to her back. And she'd break off the fish with her hand, put it on my plate. I'd have to bring two plates, one to put it on and one to cover it. And she used to break off bits of vegetables because they're all whole. Never got sick once. Never once. And here I am forward <laughs> wearing a gammy mask so I don't know I'm over it I'm over it I've got the Glock in case it kicks off because I nearly kicked off yesterday in the Intermarsh and Intermarsh can go fuck itself as well I'm sick of that chop anyway rant over let's go and get some fucking food I'm starving <laughs> right I'm going to do a little circuit so I'm going to do uh, just rings. I've done some bag earlier on, so now I'm going to do some rings. And all I do is set to five pull-ups. You can you can vary this way or that way. I do dips and I do some press-ups on the kettlebells, and you can vary that up a little bit. So to warm up, this is just what I'm going to do tonight. I have that like snatch snatch position on the on the bar, elbows up high, head through, back to here, and back down. I just do sets of this just to kind of get some sort of shoulder motion going. Normally, I just wear lots of clothes. Oh, this is adding to my uh, Olympic lifting, which has not been happening for the last few days because I pulled my back getting off the fucking chair. <laughs> it's mad, the stuff that you do, right? And then you pull your back by doing fucking stupid shit, like pulling a TV out of the car, lifting the fucking packing a crisps as well off the fucking bar counter. <laughs> and that's it. So I'm just gonna do sets of five of each exercise and do as many sets as I can. That's basically it, all the way through. There's no rest in between. We'll just keep going until I get fucking painy bollocks. And then just go eat some food. Right, sets of five. Yeah. 
felt I had like it in me, you know what I mean? So I feel like I've only got five in me, I do that, I feel like I've got ten in me. Let's do whatever I have in me, it's the second session, so it's just a bonus. Got ten, I'm gonna do six to ten, now press ups. Alrighty, I'm on the coffee. Because it's actually morning. I've made it look like it's dark. But that's just manipulating the light on the camera. One light here, and then the camera's on. A couple of things have just dawned on me the last couple of days. I like to figure out puzzles. And you'll, if you're a puzzle solver, you, you know, you might be a chess player, you might be a jigsaw fixer, or whatever they do. You might do jujitsu or boxing would be another one to figure out a puzzle. And you can be doing it for ages. And then one day, someone says the right thing at the right time and a fucking light bulb goes off. And then maybe, say for, I'll give an example of what I know, say jujitsu, I could be going to class for two, three years and the same teacher saying the same thing over and over, make a frame, move your hips, make a frame, move your hips. And you're not doing any of it. And then one day you make a frame and move your hips. <laughs> and you escape. <laughs> and it finally dawns, even though all the information was there, you just can't process it because it's overwhelming because of so much distraction, other stuff going on. It's an interesting one. I suppose the, the biggest puzzle is life, isn't it? Trying to figure out what it's all about. Or is it about anything? And I suppose the simple answer is no one really knows, right? So everyone has their theories, but nobody really knows. But it's what works for you or what makes you sleep at night comfortably without worrying about life, isn't it? came across a guy called David Hawkins the other day. Actually, Aurel put me in touch with it. Now, Aurel would have been the last person that I would have thought said the right thing at the right time. Not that he doesn't say the right thing at the right time, but something that dramatic for me, whereas I've had, I heard other theories and other ideas but when you put them all together and all of a sudden someone comes in with the same thing you've heard and then the light bulb goes off. And RL, a funny story about RL, when I used to manage a nightclub here, that's another story, that's a great story. <laughs> RL used to run the door for me, great guy. Um, we, we meet for coffees and stuff like that and we still stay in touch. But he put me in, this, in touch with this guy called um, David Hawkins who talks about frequencies. Now, frequencies for me have always been people are on the same wavelength as you are. They're, they're, there's certain people that you meet and you connect with. And they're just, they're just tuned into the, the same frequency. And most people you meet just aren't. They're just vanilla. They're just grey. They're just... They're just, they just... The way I, I used to always make this analogy of Tesco's. I used to go to Tesco, Tesco supermarket in Phippsburg. And you'd go into Tesco's and there'd be eight checkout girls on a Friday night. And 
realistically, there's only eight people in the building, and that's them. And they're all having a conversation with each other. And Sharon's talking to fucking Jacinta. And where are you going tonight? When I'm going down there, did you hear about him? And all that kind of stuff. And in the background is this beep, beep, beep. And that's just you and me passing through. But we're not part of that general frequency, if you know what I mean. So we're just, we're just part of the fucking, the surroundings, but on a different frequency to what they're tuned into. And that's what I always thought frequencies were kind of like. And I just thought they were a number. For instance, you'll hear um, certain music has a frequency of, um, and I've been talking about it before, but I didn't really know, well, it's not that I didn't know, but I just didn't tune into other stuff. So for instance, I would say like 253 hertz, the frequency of positive energy and, and things like this. Um, and I would play it at the end of, 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 of the videos. You'll, you'll hear like the, the Harry Christian music at the end. That, um, that's, a, that's a frequency. That's, everything has a frequency. Like You have a frequency. A piece of glass has a frequency. Cement has a frequency. Everything has a frequency. I watched this documentary one time about oil rigs. And when they make the oil rig, they make it at land, and then they, they float it out to sea. So for instance, like, you know the way if you turn a cup upside down, you put it into water, it won't go down. So that's what they do with the, uh, the oil rig, and they, they drive it out, and then they, they let some water in, and it starts to sink, and then it hits the bottom, and it sinks. But inside the, the actual legs, or the concrete legs of the oil rig, is a dampener, like on a piano. Because if the frequency of the wave matches the frequency of the cement, the cement will fall apart. So you have to change the frequency of the cement by hitting the dampener like you would do on a piano with a pedal. And there's a great example of that. There's a, a video of this bridge. It's in black and white, and it's moving like this. There was an earthquake going on. And I always thought it was the earthquake that was making the bridge moving as a car on it. It's an old black and white film, but it's not. It's the frequency of the wave caused by the earthquake matches the frequency of the cement and eventually it crumbles. So anyway, here's where a lot of things that I've learned over life have kind of come together. This book here, Power Versus Force. I downloaded Audible. Roy McCarthy used to say, there's a difference between strong and powerful. And I kind of got it. He gave a great analogy, which was in the dojo, we had these like, strong red pillars, and they held up the dojo. And he used to say, see them pillars? They're very strong. They hold up the building, but they have zero power. And Hawkins then talks about how most people operate under a certain frequency and they operate only in emotion. And there's a zero to 1,000 level. He's kind of mapped it out. And I'm only starting to read, I'm only starting to read the book while audio listen to the book. So I'll kind of see how I get on with it. But just the initial few chapters have kind of really switched me on to a lot of stuff that I already kind of, I already had learned, if you know what I mean. I'd kind of put the, put the pieces together in a, in a different type of way that I wouldn't have thought of before. So he has this thing where below 200 is just emotion. And then at 200 is neutrality, where all the kind of the good stuff happens. This is just my initial, I haven't tested it out, I haven't done it, I just only, I'm just straight into the book. And like he has all these emotions, and I've, I've written them down on the camera so I'm not looking down. And they start out with shame, the frequency goes up to guilt, to grief, to fear, to desire, to anger, to pride, and pride being the highest, it's higher than anger, but it's still an emotion. And then once you get to 200, then you start to get neutrality, and then you move on to uh, willingness, acceptance, reverence, love, joy. And makes a bit of sense to me. Makes a lot of sense to me. Because you can fall in and out 
end up in emotion and everything goes pear shaped for you. End up in being angry. I love being angry. It's it's almost like I remember being angry for like weeks, and it's just it's it's the drive. It's just that like focus it gives you. But it's a it's not a good emotion to hang in. You know, you can do yourself a lot of fucking damage in it. And then he was talking about addiction. And addiction, um, and this is what really kind of did it for me, because addiction, he was saying that the frequency of the drug is, is a very low frequency. It's like a 100 frequency. It's like the frequency of a vegetable. But what it does is it gets people that are already in that below 200 frequency and that kind of like stuck in all these emotional states like fear or grief or anger. And it, it, it blocks all that out and they end up in this higher frequency of love of willingness, of acceptance, and all these higher frequencies, which makes them, like the highest one you can get is, is 1,000, which is God, Jesus, Buddha, all these dudes. And I found that kind of interesting because I remember watching this documentary years ago. It was on, our, it was on BBC Two. And, it, and it, it was about drugs and addiction and what addiction was and whether people were addicted to a drug or not. And what they had come up with was addicts were addicted to the process, not the drug. And how they'd come up with that thing was they had this infiltration where they had these moles go into this drugs ring from the bottom up, these police guys. So. What they did was, they started at the bottom and they infiltrated all the way to the top. And they started with the junkie on the street, to the middleman, to the higher up, to the, the, the importer. And they took samples of the heroin along the way. Now the junkie on the street, sometimes the heroin was weak, sometimes it was strong. And other times there was no, no heroin in it. But the, the, the addict was still getting the high from the process. So he'd buy the heroin, bring it back, find a safe place, tie off his arm, put it in the spoon, light it, inject it, and he'd float off into bliss. And I always wondered, I always wondered about that, what that was. And there one was, it was just, it was just, the reaction to the stimulus. The stimulus was doing all those actions which produced the euphoric result. And I always thought like, and that's why you see a lot of people um, that have triggers or trigger responses. Like if you look at the 100 meter sprints in a race, they always have these little ticks that they do before they switch themselves on. Um, Olympic lifters do the same. They all have the same process that they do to switch themselves on. Actually, they did some uh, brain waves of Olympic lifters to see what they're thinking of when they lift. And there's nothing. They're not thinking of anything. It's just the process to get rid of the kind of the emotional state or the doubt or all these other things where it's flat lines and they just do the lift. They just lift it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's my little waffle for today. <laughs> um, um, I'm going to do a little bit more on that um, book because I'm also, I'm, also writing, I'm also writing my book, which is interesting. It, it doesn't have to be published or it doesn't have to be, I'm not looking to be in the best sellers or anything like that, but it's just, you'll find, you can start anywhere. The rule is start anywhere, do a page a day, A4 pen thing. So what I do is I have this process where I get up, I drink me potion of Tristan Kennedy's shite that he has me on, it's to hydrate me self. <laughs> but it's excellent. It makes me drink uh, a good pint of water first thing in the morning because you're gonna lose all that from pers perspiration, from breath. Um, so I hydrate straight away. Then I have my coffee because I'm intermittent fasting for this week. I'm, I'm doing 16 hours of fast, eight hours of a window. So that means I stop eating at 10 and I eat at two. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter window. And I just want to do that for a week just to see what it's about because I like to give things uh, a 
Troy. Um, they say it's better for killing old cells and, and rejuvenating new cells. Actually, the, I've been just, it's, it's been popping up on my radar for the last while with different people doing it. So I just thought, I'll give it a go, see how it is, see if it makes a difference, see if I notice any difference. Um, so then I go and I, I, I write a page. Well, it's been really three or four pages a day because you just get into a flow of it. And it's been very uh, liberating. It's kind of like, it's like, it's like you're an onion and you're just peeling off the layers. And you're finding memories that you haven't thought of since the day. The other thing about memories is, memories is very funny because I was discussing with my mother yesterday about her memories of certain things and I was talking about something that I was writing about and she doesn't remember that at all. She remembers something different. And it's, it's kind of, it's a strange one. Same with Jules, like the doc, when we were in Guadalupe, all the, all the memories are sketchy, like his are different than mine. Like the main stuff's kind of the same. We went there, we rode races, but the detail's very different. And so you don't really know what happened. That's why I video a lot of stuff. Because I, I remember, sorry, <coughs> I remember certain things that I videoed. And then when I go back and look at the actual video, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like I thought. Yeah, I look at the video and I say, geez, that's, that's not what I thought it was like. So I don't hold much truck in memory, to be honest with you. But it's more, the writing the stuff down, is, it's more the kind of like unraveling. And in that process, you'll kind of, it's like a therapy almost. In that, in that process, you're gonna find stuff about yourself that you maybe you thought, you, that's the way you used to think, or, or that's the memory you used to have. But you'll find it's very liberating. And I find it's, um, I find it's a, it's a good exercise. So it's not really to be published or anything like that. Maybe I might publish it, but I'm, if I published it, I'd probably have to wait till I died because uh, I might offend a few people because I'm just trying to be, it's just my my opinion. It's not, it's not. And that's the other thing, like a lot of opinions, when people ask you for your opinion, you generally don't give it an honest one because you don't want to offend because of the status quo because of the way people are or because of the general consensus and if you feel like you have a different opinion to everybody else you might feel that you stand out and you'd be ridiculed for it but with the book you could just write whatever you want like a diary people write diaries not for anyone ever to see it's just your thoughts um i think when i finish writing the book i will start write a diary because it's closer to the memory than trying to remember, remember shit that happened to you 30 years ago because I think, I don't think it's, I don't think memories that you have of 20 or 30 years are accurate at all. I really don't. But I know I can remember what happened today or yesterday. But I think at the end of the night, I'm going to start writing down um, what it did or how I felt or how I saw it. And then maybe referring to that for the next the next book anyway i would recommend it it's 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 a very um it's a very interesting way of kind of reflecting on something that may or may not have happened <laughs> that's it for today i'm going to continue on training i'm going to continue on chatting and i'm going to continue on with the book and see how it goes that is it. We are all one. Hare Krishna. Namaste. Hashtag Rafter. Rafter.
dream your sweet dream till your soul